Hello there. Welcome to this video on lake databases. We're going to continue our theme from the previous video in which I looked at when you're creating a lake database and you're creating external tables to go in, make sure each and every column has a data type specified and has the correct data type specified. Otherwise, when you publish the changes to that external table, they won't actually be visible and you won't be able to query it. So check that video out. It's called Lake Databases and the Importance of Data Types. In that video, I segued a little bit because I needed to use one of the new features available within Lake Databases, which is custom wildcards when setting up pointer to storage location when you're creating an external table. So what I'd like to cover in this video is I'm going to create three tables, three different scenarios for those tables. Table one is really simple. It has a folder. Underneath, it has a single parquet file. Table number two has a partition scheme. So the data in the data lake has a partition scheme that we can use in the external table. Number three, I'm going to create a table where the data is partitioned in the data lake, but it's not really a partition scheme. It's just some folders set up with data inside. Right, so we can't actually create a partition scheme, but we can use this new wildcard feature. So we'll jump into it. First thing I'll do is create a new lake database. So in my data tab, I'll click plus lake database and I will call it wild card video. I'll select as a link service my storage account and the top level container and we'll select Parquet. Now really, this link service and input folder doesn't really matter when you're creating the link, uh, the link to uh, the, the lake database because in your external table, you can specify these settings anyway, but yeah, nice to set it to the top level container. Now if I publish, okay, we can see wildcard video, no tables yet. Okay, we'll create those three tables now. I'll flick to a really, really super useful view, which is the full screen mode. So if I click that, I get a nice clean interface in Synapse Studio to do my development. Now I'm in the database designer in my Lake database. If I go back to this view, that's accessible by hovering over the wildcard video lake database or any of the lake databases, selecting the ellipsis and clicking open. And that'll open this database designer. So from here, I'll create a table. So from the table drop down, I'll select from data lake. Now I'm going to create a product table. Okay. So I'll call it product. I'll select my link service. And now notice, I don't have any way of customizing this input file or folder at the initial external table creation. So if I click in the text box, it just takes me to the browse window. If I click the folder, it takes me to the browse window. So we'll go to our product directory and I'll just show you within that, we've just got a single parquet file. It's as simple as it gets for this table. Click OK. We've got our input file or folder. And if I click Continue, on the file path here, you can see that it's appended to asterisks, Yeah, which is kind of a brute force. Look in this folder for anything and bring me back some data. OK. Now, in our data lake, we know that we've just got a single file. That works well for us. If we preview the data, we'll get the data back. Okay, very, very simple. And I'll set the max string actually to 500. I don't need 4,000. 
Now what I'll do is I just want to remove a couple of columns from my product table. So I'm just going to get rid of the properties, drag up the column and just remove thumbnail photo, which doesn't have a data type specified. That particular problem is in the other video that I've done, Lake Databases and the importance of data types. I'm going to delete these two columns. I don't need them and I don't want them. Okay, so at this stage, I'll publish that uh, publish that table. And if I open up develop and I'll just open up my SQL query, I'll go back to my uh, nice clean development uh, window. And the very first thing I do is let me just select the wildcard video database. I'll just get rid of that. Whenever I create external tables and I publish them, the very first thing I do is I check sys.external tables to make sure that the table exists. If it doesn't exist in this system view, you won't be able to query it. Now, sometimes it can take a few seconds from when you publish the external table to it being visible in sys external tables. So if you start querying the table and it's bringing back an error saying table not found, it's well worth checking sys.external tables to make sure it's there. But if we select top 10 from dim product, I'm going to anticipate, or product rather, I'm going to anticipate no problems and I'm going to get my data back. There we go. Nice simple example. Now, when we look at partitioned tables that have the source data in the data lake with you know, a recognizable partition scheme, we can set that up in the database designer. So again, I'll click table from data lake and I'm going to enter web telemetry. I'm going to drop the dim and fact uh, prefixes I used originally. Go to my data lake storage account. Again, can't really enter anything custom here and browse to where my partitioned data is. Okay, as you can see, I've got a partition scheme. I've got a folder name and a folder value, year, month, date, and then the data itself. So I'll browse back up to the top level, the root folder, click OK, and again, when I continue, at this time, it doesn't really understand anything to do with partitioning. I've got these two asterisks here, so it's just going to traverse any folder or file it finds and try and return me a, a schema. Again, I'll set the max string length to 100. And we've got some data. Okay, so I'll create that table. Now I'll create my partition scheme. So if I go to columns, let me just get rid of table browser. Okay, we've got standard columns and partition columns. So what I can do is I can create a partition column. So we'll create three of those and give them the name that we have in the source data lake itself. So we have event year as an integer. Let's create another partition column. We have event month. We'll type in event month. And again, set that to integer. And then the last partition column is the event date, so E, V, E, N, T. And now we'll set that to the date type. So we'll set date, and we've got our year, month, day. And in fact, what I probably need to do is just move this over a little bit. 
and I'll see OBS, but I think my camera's down the bottom right. So you can see we've got date set for the third level in the folder hierarchy, and we've got our two integers, okay? So I'll publish those changes. And once I see the little green tick, I'll flick back to my SQL script. Again, I'm just going to query sys external tables and wait for that table to be registered. So we're going to run that a few times. Again, it can take a few seconds. There's our web telemetry. Now I can just run a select all from web telemetry and yeah. I anticipated it's going to return my data. Now, if you look on the right hand side, I've got event year, event month and event date with some values populated because they are the partition columns that I specified. It's returning that information from the data lake. Those columns don't actually exist in the source parquet file. They're from the data lake folders. I can use those folders to filter to partition prune. Now this is important for two things. If we're using serverless SQL, which is what we're using here when we're querying the lake database, this is serverless SQL pools. We're connecting to our built-in, which is serverless SQL. So we're using for our pricing the amount of data processed. Okay, which is how serverless SQL pools is charging. Now, if we can eliminate folders that we don't need in our queries, we've got two things, two benefits. Number one, performance, because it doesn't have to go and scan all the data. And number two, it's going to reduce cost. Yes, yeah, so we've got some efficiencies there, both in terms of performance and also cost as well. Now, that was a table in which we were able to set up a partition scheme. It had a recognized partition scheme in the data lake. Now, I've got some customer data. It's partitioned, but doesn't really have a scheme. It's just folders that have been created when the data has been exported. I can't use a partition scheme for it. And when we set up the table, we've got a behavior that we have to take note of. So what I'll do is I'll create the table now. So from the data lake, it's my customer table. I'll specify my storage account. Click in. Okay, if I go into my customer incremental folder, which I will set as the root folder, because all the data that I would like that external table to be uh, to, to query is under that root folder of customer incremental. However, as you can see, I've got a couple of folders here, incremental and initial. In each of those, I've got just a date. That was when the data was exported, okay? If I drill down, then within here are Parquet files. So as you can see, it's partitioned, but it's not, it's not really partitioned. It doesn't have a recognizable partition scheme that I can actually use within an external table. If I select my customer incremental, my root folder, the lake database is able to find the data. So again, I'm going to set the string length. If I preview the data, because it's using these two asterisks to just do like a bulk search of everything in the folder, and I get my data back. However, when I create the table, so there we go, there's my there's my customer table. If I simply publish that table. Go back to my SQL scripts and try and query that table. Actually, let's make sure that table is registered. So external tables, we'll give it a few goes to make sure it's returning. And there we go, we've got our customer table. So if I try and query that table now, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get any data back. All right, run it again. It's registered successfully. I just don't get any data. 
If I look at the messages, it just says, warning, no data sets were found that match the expression customer. And the total size of the data scanned is zero megabytes. So it, it hasn't found the data. If I go back and look at the properties of the table, let me just drag up the customer table. On the general tab, we've got storage settings for the table. Okay, the input folder was data lake house, custom incremental, but it can't find the data. If I click in the text box, it'll bring up the browse window, as does the folder. If I select the pencil, I'm now able to put in my wildcards. Okay, so I know that I've got that initial or incremental folder at that level. I can forward slash, I've got the date folders at that level, but I'm also just for belts and braces going to say parquet data, just interested in files that are parquet. I've got the data format that it will use to find the schema information and select the data, but in terms of actually telling the Lake database what to look for, we'll specify it here. Now, if we publish that, Publish that back up. And again, sometimes it takes a few seconds for those metadata changes to be recognized by, let's say, serverless SQL pools in this case. So it might take us a couple of goes when we select and return data, but we've got our data back. Okay. So when we've initially set up that external table, because those two asterisks just look for everything in that root folder, we see data. When we actually publish the table, we're not able to see the data from those folders that have been set up. They're not partition folders, so we can't really set up any partition columns. So what we can do is go in to the table, click our general tab and the storage settings, we can click the pencil and specify our wildcard locations to pick up the data. Okay, super useful feature in Lake databases if you have a folder structure that isn't really a partition scheme, but you want the data to be visible through external tables. So I hope you found this video useful. There's going to be some more Lake databases. Uh, videos coming as well as other Synapse analytics videos. So if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, please consider subscribing. There's videos you know, every couple of weeks and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.